Hello everybody, my name is Light of Hand and today I'll be taking a look at Shadows of Brimstone Feral Vampires Mission Book Pack, sorry. Um, okay, so let's have a quick look at the uh, front art here. I do have to say, I do, I quite like it, if I'm honest. Uh, I also like how they've got the old Transylvanian or the old sort of like coats as well on them. They do look cool. Anyway, as I do always start with all of my uh, videos, I do always talk with a little bit of fluff. Lurking in the dark, lurking in the darkest shadows, bloodthirsty vampires emerge from under the cover of night to feed on the land of the living. Ancient and gruesome monstrosities, the feral vampires are terrifying creatures of the old world, unleashed upon the western frontier after travelling thousands of miles by ship, train and coach, in coffins or crates of, of their native soil. They are neither living nor dead, but the undead, and their hunger for flesh blood from off the new frontier. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the what you get here. I'm not going to show completely everything guys, I'm going to let you guys know that now, so there's any arguments that may pop up later. Um, so, because one or two things I, I like leaving out sometimes from these things, so it, it encourages people to go out and buy it. So the next thing I'm going to have a take a quick look at is actually, oh it's coffins. So the lighting's not amazing here unfortunately guys, so there's some coffins. There's uh, the uh, tokens for Bitten. Oh, one's just come flying out. I just wanted to turn it over, see what's on the other side. Vampire Hero. Okay, cool. Cool. There is Holy Water and Stakes. I will be showing you the rules for them. There is the um, Bleeding Tokens and the Vampire Lord. Let's put that over there. Let's get that and let's put this back here for the second. Oh, I didn't have a look at the actual... There's me being silly, isn't there? I apologise guys. Okay, so there is also a story character. There is the vampire room. I like this because you as you can see there's they look like they've dragged some of the victims. Can I can I get it in the light a bit and I'll zoom in? There's the like, one of the ladies. And there's a gentleman in the shadows there. I like the shadows. Now what's on the other side? I'm assuming that's if you're in another world and you're going after them. That does look cool though. Actually, I'm going to quickly check that in the book because uh, there's only one card and that's what they did before with something else. Okay, so new objective and tile rooms. Yeah, so if you're in, the, in, in any other world and it's the mission type. Okay, also in the book itself, guys. Sorry, before I feel like I'm. You get one, two, three, four. Four missions and also a paint guide at the back and what to do. A small FAQ as well. Now I, I do feel like I should mention them a little bit more often in my videos. Now we're going to quickly take a look at the normal vampire sprue. You also get, uh, they, they come on a 40 mil stands. You get six of them. Unfortunately that means two of the same poses. Uh, is this, to be honest, this is one of the ones I was mostly looking forward to. Um, surprised I didn't do it first, but I did ask you guys, and that's how it, the votes went. So, yeah, there's the Fort Mill stands. Also, because I got the certain Pacific pack, I need to be careful here, guys, because I don't want to lose the uh, the head for him. He comes with a Fort Mill stand. I Again, I'm not a fan of their resin at all. I'm not a fan of resin bang full stop. If I'm honest, it's one of the things that's partly putting me off from getting um, the new Fallout game because there's a lot of resin in that. That said, this model does look good though. Uh, I do have to say, I do like the detail, the holes in the cloaks and so on. I might have to get the werewolf. And now I need to be really careful with this bit because I don't want to drop it. I drop that, there's a good chance it'll end up in a Hoover at some point. As it is Christmas week and we've got to tidy the house up. I do like the. The head, and I think it's done very well. If you could see, I'll come in a little closer. I think I zoomed in a little bit here. Let's see if I can zoom in just a little. Oh no, it's not, the lighting's not great. Let's come back out. You can see the teeth? I hope you can. Right, anyway, let's come back out. Okay, so I'm going to leave, turn the stand upside down, put the head in the 
so it's got a little bit of walls. Okay, so let's come back all the way out. So I'm not gonna look at. I'm gonna take a look at the cards first. So here is your vampire nest, <coughs> and basically, if, if you're playing the campaign and this isn't the end room, there's a, 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 a an event card which will be in the. Uh, I need to keep these events separate from each pack because. Otherwise, I'm going to be spending ages looking through these things to find the right ones. So that means it, it does mean a bit more putting away at the end as well. But yeah, if there is no, if there are no open doors on the board, comes into play a cross path passage before it. Okay, so shows you sort of there. But if you wanted to play the advanced rules, neither living nor dead, the uh, event card. Also, guys, if you wanted to play an actual. Vampire theme story adventure. Heroes may choose to make a, a mission, a vampire adventure with the following modifiers: vampire encounters. Whenever a hero draws one or more encounters, even in the other world, roll a d6. On a one, two, three, they must draw one vampire encounter. Common enemy is the feral vampire. Whenever a threat card would be drawn, roll a d6. On a one, two, three, instead. The heroes are attacked by feral vampires. One to two heroes will be one feral vampire. Three to four will be three feral vampires. Five to six will be a peril dice of feral vampires. A vampire tra um, tra traits. Whenever a feral vampire enemies are encountered, roll a d6 and a one, two, three to draw a vampire threat uh, trait card for them. So that's kind of cool. I do like that. Okay, so now we come to the so let's have a look at the wooden stake rules. Discard for free attack, one combat, crits on 5-6, plus one damage versus vampire and beast, oh sorry, undead and beast, so that's werewolves as well then. Or plus two versus vampires, may be purchased at a church or church tent in town for $50 each. Now, if you know you're going off to do a vampire mission or even maybe a werewolf mission, that's not bad to get a little bit of extra damage. Holy water. Now this one does interest me. Holy water discard to use. A free attack range 5 does d6 damage, ignores defense and armor to pacific undead or demon enemies or to heal d6 wounds if holy. Priest. This would be amazing with your priest because you may not be able to heal yourself. So look, 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 look. Um, may be purchased at a church or church tent in town for a hundred dollar hundred dollars now that's not bad again unfortunately not so good if you've got your, your bandido or someone like that now we're going on to the lower threat cards let's have a take one one feral vampire two feral now that's different for low threat I'm surprised there's at least two I thought it'd be only one because I I haven't read the cards properly but that does scare me a little Okay, medium threat is three vampire, uh, three feral vampires. Nothing else on them. Okay, it's two cards. High threat cards, a paradise. So you could get up to six. Minimum of three, maximum of six. And now we're going on to the epic. Now I'm assuming that's going to be a vampire lord or something. Okay, so this this one here is a brood. Okay, so there is a slight difference. A vamp, uh, feral vampire brood. Yeah, if you're one to two heroes, you will receive a peril dice. If you are three to four heroes, you receive a vampire lord and peril dice. If you're five to six heroes, you receive a vampire, a feral vampire lord, and six feral vampires. I like the idea of they're saying they're feral because that says to me they could bring out another pack of just you know like so or, or different types of heroes. Now we're on to gear. Okay, so one of the gear cards you can draw is holy water. Gain two holy water tokens, discard this card. Okay, so let's put that down there. Wooden stakes. Gain two uh, stake tokens, discard this card. Garlic. Garland? Garland. Okay, I'd say garlic, but okay, garland. When attacking a vampire enemy, you are. The, uh, when attacking you, undead enemies are minus one to hit. Roll six still triggers the ability. You you automatically pass. Uh, oh, so you automatically pass a uh, vape test from them as well. It's one anvil. 
Yeah, Seamus and Anvil. Uh, it's worth two two fifty. I, I can see why it's an anvil as well, but at the same time, that's kind of useful in some ways. You know, if you're going up against the, you know, because there's so many undead uh, enemies out there now. So I, I don't think that's a too bad card to actually find. I don't think it's amazing, but I don't think it's too bad. A vampire hunt hunter's shotgun range six two shots uses a d8. Uh, uses a d8 to hit and for damage. Six, seven, or eight count as critical hits. Plus one damage against undead or beasts. So werewolves again. Will occur. May uh, sorry enemies. Plus two if you are holy. Okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, so a shotgun preacher comes to mind here, guys. May not use warp stone upgrades. Oh, is one anvil has two upgrade slots. Is two handed and is. 950. Um, so oh, the not allowed to use the <coughs> upgrades that are. Uh, I said warpstone, didn't I? I meant darkstone. Yeah, so that's a transfusion kit. Use one grip and take d6 wounds, ignoring damage to cancel to cancel another hero's curse on a roll of four or three plus, including during a fight, excluding during a fight. Sorry. To cancel or to cancel an injury just rolled of another hero on the same tile. After, after success, gain 50 XP and roll a d6 on a one or two, it breaks. Okay. Request the hero of cunning three, three or higher to use. It's worth. See, that's not too bad. Again, it takes the curse away. Now, I'm not actually showing the curse in this one, guys. So, I'm sorry if anyone's like hoping for that, but again, I'm sorry, I'm not... It's packs like this, I think I should leave something out. Just so you guys can think, okay, so do I buy this, do I not, and then find out what sort of happens. Okay, so now we're on to the artifacts. So we're on to Liquid Sunlight. A me uh, discard to, to immediately do D3 wounds, ignoring tough armor endurance to undead models on the same... And adjacent tiles to you. Oh, so it says model, model to every to every undead model. So this could be really good if you swarmed by undead, because you could just kill loads loads of undead and get loads of XP just just like that with this. Is it a hit though? Yeah, it's still gets a uh, discard to re-roll a hold back the darkness roll. Just also you could no. See, I don't see unless the game's about to end. I don't see. I'd only keep that if it's gonna. You're at a point where the game's gonna end. To do that, that I would mostly want it for. It's worth uh, 550. That's not bad. Kind of like that. Hunter's stake. Now this is an artifact. Okay. Uh, it does plus one combat, plus one initiative. <laughs> okay, not being funny. That is already. If you give that to the preacher, he's still slow than most things. Um, <laughs> you are plus one damage using against undead and beasts or plus three damage against vampires request four cutting or higher to use is one anvil one hand and is worth 850 cross of Kendro. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right guys if I'm not I apologize plus one combat all undead enemies adjacent to you or on the same map tile if you are holy, are minus one defense. Now that's really good. I've, this is something I think is not a bad idea. I think the holy books are quite a good weapon for the preacher because it gives him plus one um, faith. But that that's not too bad. Must be uh, spirit of three or higher. Is one anvil, one handed, and is also is eight hundred and twenty five. Vampire Fang. Now I might need to zoom in on this. Sorry, guys. Yes, I do. Apologize there, guys. Vampire Fang. Artifact Charm. Whenever you kill an enemy, you may roll. You may heal two wounds. You are immune to vampire, vampire bites. Enemy ability it is one anvil. It's worth seven hundred and fifty. Okay, that's kind of cool. 
Okay guys, I don't want to show all the darkness cards, so how many we got here? We've got five, so let's have a quick little shuffle. I, I've not looked at these, so I pray I don't get some ancient bible text word that some vampire's meant to be or something, and then I really don't know where to go with it. Okay, so let's just put that there like that. Let's turn this one around. Oh, I love it. It's like the Nosferatu sort of thing. Oh, that's cool. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the really old uh, Nosferatu movie, but you, his shadow moves through and it's, it's before people even know he's there sometimes. Creeping shadows, sorry. Counts the number of growing dread cards in the stack and discard pile. Then roll, roll, uh, then roll a number of the dice equal to the total of each. On a one, two, three, move the darkness space one. Oh, bugger. On the roll of one, two, three, move the darkness space forward on the depth track. May not use to, to reroll. Okay, I need to reread this, guys, because I'm a little confused here. Count the number of growing dread cards in the stack and discard pile. Then roll a number of d6 equal to. Oh, wow, so. Dread card, that's not nice. You could end your adventure really just there. Uh, no, I suppose how far it depends how far the um, thing's gone. So, again, we're on to traits, vampire traits. Uh, yeah, I really don't like that. That could be a game, end the game really, really early. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's shuffle them. Out. As I said, I've not seen these. I'm not sure what these, these do. Maybe there's one here that makes them more human like the uh, succubuses. So let's pull this one out. Okay, so this one is Soul Strippen. Gains two com plus two combat when attacking any holy or traveler hero. Or plus three if both. Oh wow. At the end of each turn, heroes take one horror hit. Wounds count on each vampire. Okay, let me tell reread this. At the end of each turn, heroes take one horror hit for each wound currently on. Oh wow! So that would mean like a normal. I'll show you in a sec. So on here, guys, a normal vampire without any plusages or anything like that has eight wounds. That means he would take eight horror hits. It's plus. I gives it gives it plus five. To its, um, I think that's actually to hit it a bit when it's like that. Okay, and then you've got the encounter cards. Now I never show the encounter cards, guys. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve encounter cards there. I'm not going to show you any of them because I feel like that gives a bit of story away. That's why I try to be careful with story. I like stories. <laughs> okay. Let's zoom in. We're on to the card now, guys. Feral Vampires. Vampire Undead. Large Stand. Initiative 5. Abilities. Fear 2. A hero starting their adjacent, uh, starting their activation adjacent automatically takes two horror hits. Drains blood. Anytime this enemy does one or more wounds to a hero with a combat hit, it heals one for itself, one wound for itself. Mystic form, five armor. So you've now got an enemy who has armor. Wow. Vampiric bite. Feral vampires to hit rolls it ignores um, roll of six ignores defense and on a roll of roll d6 further. If there's another six, the hero gains a bitten marker. Moves eight four plus escape. Melee. 4 plus. Combat, 3. Damage, 2. Defense, unfortunately you can see a little bit of damage on the card here. Hey ho, I know what it means though. So it's not a big problem. It's not actually a number. Defense of 4. Defense of, sorry, health of 8, which I've already spoke about. XP is if you hit it, and you would get 15, but you also need to do wounds to get that experience points. So again, as I explained before, if you hit and did one wound, it'd be 20. If you hit and done two wounds, it'd be 25. And so on. Uh, elite ability, elite chart, sorry. Hey, 
Radius, the fer have the Feral Vampire now causes wounds 3 and is one plus 1 health. Transfixed Stare, the, a hero currently be, being targeted by a Feral Vampire may not use Grit, that's kind of scary actually. Grave Strength, a, a Feral Vampire combats are now plus 2 damage, eh, that's, not, that's not great but it's not bad either. Flight. Feral vampires may move through models and other targets each turn. Plus, they also gain plus two initiative, so that's already faster than an average gunslinger. Masters of the Mist. Mist form is now four plus armor. Now that's, wow. Ancient. Plus two health, plus one combat. Also gains the word ancient. Fair enough. So now we go to the other side, which is the brutal version. Now their initiative has only gone up by one. Their fear has also gone up by one. Uh, okay, they've got something else. So let's actually read, read this. It looks like it's a little bit more different here. Savage Blood Drain. Anytime this um, enemy does one or more wounds to heroes with, with its combat hits, it heals D3 wounds for itself. Wow. Smith is still the same, so he's bitten, so that stays there. It moves at 8 still, it's escape at 8. I believe it's melee is still, yep, melee is still the same. It's combat is plus 1, but the damage is now plus... Uh, so it does 4 combat, does 4 damage. Its defense is still 4. It has now got 12 health. It is 15 still with uh, 15... Okay, you get 15 XP for each hit you do, but you do not get any experience unless you cause a wound. When then each wound is worth plus five. Okay. Okay, so this is a little bit more different. Dark, uh, dark, dark control. Vampire bite. Vampire bite. Vampiric bite to roll a six now and becomes bitten marker on the further roll of five, six. So it's more likely to give, turn, turn them into vampires. Uh, that's the same trick. There, Nos, Nosferat. The Feral Vampire now makes Nosferat. I think that's what that says. A Feral Vampire now makes melees to hit plus three. Flight is still the same. Yep, still the same. Masters of Mist is still the same, but Ancient is slightly more different. Ancient now gives plus four health. Plus two combat and gains the words ancient. Okay, guys. Well, that's the Feral Vampire set. Um, hope sorry for a little bit of interruptions there with my reading. Um, I apologise for that. But I do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please click like. If you'd like to subscribe, please do. If you'd like to leave a comment, every comment is welcome. Also, guys, I've got some other shows to bring some stuff. I'm waiting for. I'm still waiting for my. Um, because I live in the UK, I'm still waiting for my other bits to turn up. I'm wondering, part of me is wondering if um, Flying Frogs prevented me from having them so I can do more, more videos. I'm winding, I'm winding up. No, they're not doing that. At least I don't think they are. Anyway, guys, I hope you're having a good day. I hope everything is well. And goodbye.